to Sushmata's voice. Today's story is The Making of a Scientist. Story in a nutshell. Richard A. Bright had received the Cyril Scholar Award and the Scaring Plow Award for Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. It was his fascination for butterflies that opened the world of science to him. The world, the story here is about Richard H. Bright, who grew up in the town of Reading in Pennsylvania, USA. As he did not have much to do there, collecting things was his hobby. He used to collect butterflies as a child in kindergarten. But how did this curious child who collected butterflies go on to become one of the greatest scientists of the world is what we will discover here in the story. About the author, Robert W. Peterson was born in 1925, Warren, Pennsylvania and died in February 11, 2006 and was an American newspaper writer who later became a freelance author of magazines, articles and books, especially on the topics of sports and scouting. His 1970 chronicle of Negro League baseball title, Only the Balls Was White, was hailed by the New York Times as having recaptured a lost era in baseball history and a rich facet of black life in America. The baseball commissioner at the time, Bowie Khan, later credited Peterson's book with having focused greater attention on the accomplishments of Negro League pay players was leading to their admission to the Baseball Hall of Fame. The plot of the story. The making of a scientist is a story about the famous scientist Richard Ebright. Richie was a very curious child right from his childhood. He had started collecting butterflies during his childhood and when he was in the second standard he had already collected all the 25 species found near his hometown. He thought it would be an end of butterfly collection until one day his mother bought him a book named The Travels of Monarch Ten. This was a turning point in his life and he got much more interested in dealing with science. He started with tagging butterflies which a task given at the end of the book that his mother bought for him. Then, when he first entered the country science fair with a slide of the frog tissue, he lost. Everybody won something, but his project did not win any prize. He was sad, but also understood that to win, he needed to do real experiments and not just make neat and clean models. Then he wrote down to Dr. Arkyohart at the University of Toronto, asking him for ideas to make projects. He stayed busy during his high school, working on the long list sent to him by Dr. Arkharat. Then, for the next year's fair, he chose the project of looking at the viral disease that killed nearly all the monarch caterpillars every few years. He thought that the reason for this could be a beetle, so he started raising caterpillars in the presence of beetles, but could not get any results. So, when he showed his trial experiment at the country fair, his project won a prize. Then for the next year, he had an experiment to show that the viceroy butterflies copied monarchs. This project also made him win prizes. Then he started his research as to the purpose of the 12 golden spots of the, on the back of a monarch pupa. Everybody believed that it was just a design, but Dr. Yukahart thought otherwise. Then Ebright and another brilliant science student got together and made a device that could show that the golden spots were responsible for releasing a hormone that was necessary for its growth. With the help of sophisticated instruments at one of the labs, he got a chance to work and found the chemical structure of the hormone in the gold spots. Then, one day, while looking at the photos of the chemical structure, he solved one of the biggest puzzles of life. He came to know how a cell blueprints its DNA. It was a big breakthrough and was published in a magazine. He also had many other interests and also admired his social studies teacher as he was the one who used to give him new ideas. He was good at debating, public speaking and a great canoeist. He never used to win for the sake of winning or for prizes but because he wanted to be the best at whatever he does.
It is shown in this chapter that with the bright amount of curiosity, a bright mind and the will to win for right reasons are the qualities needed to be a scientist. His mother also played a big role in making him what he was as it was she who supported him throughout his journey and brought him the book The Travels of Monarch Ten. This aroused his curiosity in the field of science. The theme of the story. The Making of a Scientist is a story of a scientist named Richard A. Bright. It is an interesting study of how A. Bright became a scientist. After the early death of her husband, A. Bright was everything for his mother. He used to get top grades in schools. At a very early age, when he was just in the second standard, he had already collected 25 species of butterflies found around his town. The book, The Travels of Monarch X, gave him a thorough knowledge about the monarch butterflies. In the second year of his high school, A. Bright began a search of an unknown hormone in the gold spots of the butterflies. In later years, he discovered how a cell could read the blueprints of its own deity. Justification of the title It is true, A. Bright was a born scientist. Many other factors also contributed to his making as a scientist. He was the only son of a single mother. When A. Bright was just in second grade, he had collected all species of butterfly in his town. He would tag butterflies and raise them in his basement. In the seventh grade, he learned what real science was. He took part in a science fair but did not win any prize. Then he did many experiments such as finding out why viceroy butterflies resembled monarch butterflies, discovery of an unknown insect hormone growing cells from a monarch's wing, discovering the chemical structure of the hormone and the role of DNA. A Bryce findings and experiments prove he was a great scientist in the making. The Character Sketch Richard H. Ebright is one of the leading scientists. He has contributed significantly in biochemistry and molecular biology. He has been interested in science since his boyhood years. At the age of 22, he excited the scientific world and with a new theory. He, it was published in the journal entitled Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. It was first of his many achievements in the field of science. It started with his studies on butterflies. A. Bright was the only child of his parents. They lived in the north of Reading, Pennsylvania. There was nothing for A. Bright to do there. He had no companies. He was not a good player, but his hobby was collecting things. A. Bright was fascinated by butterflies. A. Bright possessed those traits which are necessary for the making of a scientist. These are, start with a first-rate mind, add curiosity and mix in the will to win for the right reasons. A bride had these qualities. The blogger's opinion question. What do you think made a bride the leading scientist of his times? Do you think that creating and cherishing your interests to make a life out of it is very much needed? How do you prove that when we start early, we have better ideas than when we start late? Please do comment in the comment section below with your answers of thought.